Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am CNW1015, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the 442 type Atlantic steam locomotives, which is probably one of my favorite wheel arrangements for, I, I don't know how obvious it is, I literally named my channel after Atlantic. But anyway, without further ado, let's just kind of jump right into this. So first off, what exactly is an Atlantic? Well, an Atlantic type is a steam locomotive with a white notation of 442, which means it has four lead pilot wheels, four driving wheels, and two trailing wheels. The first Atlantics were built as tank engines, and they were used in the United Kingdom on the London, Tilbury, and South End Railway in the 1880s. The first Atlantics that were developed in the United States, they came from four from, excuse me, from two four twos and four four os, as the need for fast passenger locomotives came about on U.S. railroads. The benefits of a four four two was the addition of a larger firebox behind the driving wheels and over the trailing wheels, and with the ad ad extra wheels on the engine, it could also support a larger boiler as well. The first Atlantic built Atlantic singular built in the United States was built in 1888 by the Hinkley Locomotive Works. Don't, don't be, um, I wouldn't be surprised if you've never heard of them. I didn't, I've never heard of them either. This locomotive was actually an experimental engine that had two fireboxes and it was very Camelback-like in design. But it turns out the double firebox design was not very successful and the engine would be scrapped very shortly after it was built. The second class and more successful, the second and more successful class of U.S. Atlantics were built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1894 for the Atlantic Coastline as their I-2 class, and this is most likely where the class got the name Atlantic from. Throughout the late 1890s and early 1900s, almost every U.S. railroad had an Atlantic-type locomotive, with such as New York Central had their I-21 class, the Pensy had their E-6s, the Reading had their P-5s, the Southern Pacific had their A-3s, and the Union Pacific had their A-2s. The Chicago Northwestern had their Class Ds, the Missouri Pacific had their A-79s, the Milwaukee Road had their Class As, and the Santa Fe had their 1452 class, just to name a few of the various classes of Atlantics. In their heyday, there were many different types of Atlantics built as well. Some were built as camelbacks, like on the Reading, Long Island, and, Sh and Central of New Jersey railroads, and others were even used as inspection locomotives, like this one example that I found off the um, Reading Railroad. There were also a number of different Atlantics that claimed speed records in the early 1900s, with Pennsylvania Railroad 7002 claiming a speed record of 127 miles per hour, and Santa Fe number 510 claiming a speed record of 106 mile per hour. Many of these, lo when these locomotives were first built, they would be used on mainline passenger trains, but when railroads began to shift from wooden passenger cars to steel passenger cars, it would soon become apparent that the Atlantics were not well equipped to pull the heavier steel cars, as many Atlantics were built with large diameter driving wheels, which were quite good for speed, but were not very good for getting traction. By the 1920s, many Atlantics would find themselves displaced by 460s and 462s, and they were now finding themselves on branch line trains and on commuter trains throughout, throughout the 1920s and 30s. However, there is one odd case in the 1930s that would be the exception to this. In 1935, the Milwaukee Road would build four Class A Atlantics for their Hiawatha service between St. Paul and Chicago. The Class A's were the last Atlantics built in the United States, and they were also the most powerful Atlantics ever built in, ever built in the U.S. And these trains were the first locomotives in, in the country, I believe, that were designed for regular operation at over 100 miles per hour. Unfortunately, the Atlantics, their short service life, they would, for the most of their service life, they would be supplemented by 462 Pacifics, and all four of them would be scrapped by 1951. By the 1930s and 40s, many roads would begin to scrap their Atlantics, with some examples surviving throughout the 1950s, only in a few rare cases. Most of them were scrapped in the 40s. 
Unfortunately, the Atlantics were not the luckiest when it came to preservation, as today only six managed to survive into preservation, with Southern Pacific 3025, Detroit, Toe Toledo, and Iron 1045, Chicago and Northwestern 1015, Central of New Jersey 592, Pennsylvania Railroad 7002, and Pennsylvania Railroad 460 being the only surviving Atlantics. Out of all these locomotives, currently none of them are in operational condition, and as of now, there stand no plans to put any of them back into operation con operational condition. However, Pennsylvania Railroad 7002 did, for a very brief moment, operate on the Strasburg Railroad in the 1980s, between, I believe, 1983 and 1989. But when the Strasburg Railroad became in possession of ultrasonic boiler testing equipment in the late 1980s, they would discover that 7002's firebox was too thin for safe operation, so in 1989, 7002 would be retired from excursion service. The Atlantic type of locomotives are some of the most elegant and some of the fastest steam locomotives ever built, and now this iconic yet somewhat elusive class of steam locomotives have rightfully earned their place in railroad history, I believe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. This is CNW1015 signing off. Have a wonderful rest of your day.